A famous explorer once said that the extraordinary is in what we do, not who we are. Normally when you quote someone, you're supposed to give credit at the end. In this case, they don't because no famous explorer ever said this. In our darkest moments, we find something. Something that keeps us going. This opening narration is all about finding the strength within yourself to survive when in danger. But here Laura doesn't find any inner strength at all. She's safe from drowning by a crew member. Sort of negates your whole opening narration. Washing up on a beach after a shipwreck cliche. Sucker punch from off screen cliche. After being strung up from the ceiling, Laura's escape plan is to set herself on fire and fall two stories head first onto a stone floor. This is stupid for two reasons, not just the falling on your head part. There is no guarantee that setting the bag on fire would have also burned through the ropes. You might have just hung there and burned alive without falling. The developers like this quick time event so much they use it again five minutes later. Some considerate soul went across the entire island marking climbable ledges with white paint. Only one match left in the box cliche. This trope will never build the tension people imagine it does. Sam is supposed to be a professional filmmaker shooting a documentary, yet she's recording in 1080i on a handheld camcorder and points the camera directly at a mirror so she can take a selfie. And when were you last in the field without a TV crew behind you? Got 30 years experience, two PhDs, one in East Asian history, so why don't you just stick to boats, Mr. Grimm? Ship, Dr. Whitman, that's a ship. Come on, a sea captain this salty should be captain of a shrimp boat, not a multi-million dollar research vessel like the Endurance. If you are going to use a stereotypical captain, at least put him on the right freaking boat. Laura and the rest of the crew are searching for the lost island of Yamatai. This is a pretty common adventure plotline for stories set before the invention of satellite imaging, but in modern stories there should be no lost anything. Alex even mentions satellite imaging in this very cutscene. So what, you can use satellites for weather reports but not to look through Google Maps? Finding Yamatai should be as simple as finding the closest Starbucks. After watching Sam's bad b-roll, Laura wakes in the morning in this shot, hunts and kills a deer in the next, and then it's night again by the time we see her cooking it. And she didn't travel some big distance, she hunted that deer a stone's throw from her campsite. It's all my fault. This is all my fault. Correct. It is all your fault. You going to eat any of that deer you spent all day hunting and cooking? No? Just leave it on the spit? That a girl. My manners. I'm sorry, I'm Matthias. A teacher by trade. I haven't watched much of Lost, and even I can tell not to trust this shady looking bastard. I bet he's a bad guy. Surprise, I was right. Dandruff. Legend says she had shamanistic powers. And this is where she loses me. Well, there's always some truth to myths. Laura Croft, archaeologist, is bored and dismissive towards historical myths and legends of lost ancient civilizations. So, did you nod off during Greek and Egyptian mythology as well? Why go into this field if that's your attitude? Matthias, who we learn is a fanatical cult leader with a penchant for killing or brainwashing every man who washes up on his island and burning every woman, kidnaps Sam and leaves Laura sleeping peacefully by the fire. Let go. Since when do you need to fire a bullet to open a bear trap? It's not a padlock you don't have the key to. Reyes is just being unnecessarily dangerous in this scene because the developers saw one too many cliches of people opening locks in movies with guns. Is Sam with you? She was with you. Jonah has no way of knowing that Sam and Laura were together. Laura showed up after Sam finished talking on the radio and then Sam was immediately kidnapped. You can't shoot me, go one and all. Really? That's the take they went with. Okay. Sound advice, if unintelligible. Okay. Let's split up. Everyone then proceeds to wander off on their own. There's no doubt. Himiko had power. Some say shamanistic. Elemental. A woman wields that much power, and sooner or later it gets called witchcraft. Well, yeah, Laura, women using mystical powers connected to the earth? That's pretty much the textbook definition of witchcraft. Thanks for pointing out the obvious. This island, it must have once been part of Yamatai. You were right, Laura. <gasps> the Lost Kingdom. It's like finding Atlantis. Yeah, just like finding Atlantis, that place everyone over the age of five knows about because of countless books, movies, comics, games, and Leonard Nimoy documentaries. No one outside of Japan has ever heard of Yamatai. I had to look that shit up on Wikipedia. This makes the second time Laura's been captured in just the first hour alone. All of those years of being considered the best female in gaming. Gone. Don't you fucking move. You realize that you only tied Laura's hands, right? Her legs are still more than capable of getting her ass out of there once you leave. You couldn't spend a minute tying her to a tree, maybe post a guard? Why would you expect her to stick around if she just watched you shoot a guy before leaving to hunt down and kill the rest of her friends? I always find them. Attempted rape. Bonus sin for making this a quick time event. Laura goes from being horrified about killing another human being to not batting an eye about killing dozens of them in the course of one cutscene. Got another one! She went down over there! 
Yamatai is located somewhere in the Sea of Japan, yet somehow all the survivors who washed up here are American. Roth built a campfire on top of a wooden platform. Something tells me Roth is not the experienced adventurer he's made out to be. So I assume the plan is to take that up to the radio tower. Emergency radio transponders were just fine on their own. That's the whole point. And if the radio tower works, you wouldn't even need the fucking transponder. So I was on the walk, right? Doing a spot of midnight fishing. So Sam waited until Grimm was halfway through his story before hitting the record button. Sam may be the worst documentary filmmaker ever. Good luck editing this mess together. We're gonna make you look like Gordon Ramsay in editing. How are you going to make anyone look good at anything in editing when you only ever record half the scene? I've studied them so much, I can see charts on the back of my eyelids. There is no way your handheld camcorder is getting audio this good from this distance and with an ocean breeze blowing into your onboard microphone. You've got great instincts, girl. He would have been so proud of you, Lara. 99% of Ross' dialogue in this game is giving Laura motivational support. How did these leaves get all over the console but not the rest of the room? This radio tower still has power. I know that Germans are world-class engineers and all, but there is no way in hell anything on this island is producing electricity. I am all out of fucks to give over all the times Laura should have died but didn't. Laura destroys historical ruins and doesn't bat an eye. Why did you become an archaeologist again? Laura finds a rope on the ground and decides to combine it with her arrows. This would never work. Ever. The weight of the rope would drag the arrow to the ground after just a few feet. Also, how does using a rope make it possible for Laura to tear doors out of the frames? It's still her own upper body strength. Couldn't she pull out doors without messing with ropes and arrows? I'm really glad you moved. Roth, who has an injured leg and uses that as an excuse not to climb the cliff to the radio tower, climbed up a cliff so he could have a campsite with a better view. Kill her! <laughs> Matthias orders his men to kill Laura and they immediately disobey him by knocking her out. So the Oni, a group of undead Japanese samurai who show no mercy and kill anyone who comes near their monastery, just drag Laura inside unconscious and string her up from the ceiling. They killed everyone else and had a good time doing it from the looks of this room. Why make the exception for Laura? The developers like that opening quick time event so much they use it again three hours later. Laura finds a shotgun on a dead German soldier and it works perfectly despite having not been oiled once since World War II and exposed to the elements for that entire time. Ironic statement. Wind this strong would easily blow Lara off this small ledge. Good to know that the giant samurai from Sucker Punch found more work. What exactly did this hallway get stuck on to keep it from falling? This thing spans a freaking canyon. There is nothing on either side to stop it from falling down. Sam? Sam! Way to yell into the radio even though Sam just finished telling you someone was coming and she needed to hide it. This entire game, Lara has been using arrows and ropes to get across gaps. But not here. She just wades right into that shit. I'm sure Jurassic Park 2 is just happy that someone finally stole a scene from it. Lara only had time to fasten the shoulder straps to this parachute, but somehow the waist strap is fastened as well as soon as the glass breaks. Why would you want to take your parachute off of this height? Sure, hitting the trees could kill you, but so could hitting the ground. At least you could steer somewhat with the parachute on. Lara reopens the wounds she received at the beginning of the game, then spends the next 10 minutes unable to climb due to the pain of her injury. Why wasn't she in that much pain when first injured? Lara did all sorts of jumping and climbing minutes after she was impaled back in the cave. This area is completely different from when Lara saw it from on top of the mountain. There was no shantytown under the palace and both of the bridges were intact. All of the rust and dirt here tells me this helicopter has been sitting here for years, yet the pilot's corpse is still fresh. I'm sure Rambo 3 is just glad that someone finally stole a scene from it. FYI, cauterizing a wound doesn't heal it. It just stops it from bleeding. You are still seriously injured. In fact, using an arrowhead is only going to make your injury worse. This arrow was just pulled out of Laura's stomach, yet there isn't a single drop of blood anywhere on it. Oh no, that stereotypical character we spent all of two minutes getting to know. Where did Roth get a high-powered rifle? I've seen both of his campsites and there was no rifle at either of them. Also, Roth climbed up yet another mountain with his injured leg. I've got a clear sight with my rifle until the palace wall. Really? You are at a lower angle to the bridge. Anyone not on the side facing you is completely out of your line of sight. That is the opposite of having a clear shot. Rather than simply push Lara over the edge of the bridge she was sitting on, this genius decides to pull Lara back under the bridge and into a headlock to break her neck. Efficiency, dude. Learn it. Laura has an automatic rifle and a clean shot at the antagonist. So of course she shoots an arrow at an unimportant side character instead. She chooses her bow over a machine gun and a shotgun, two infinitely better weapons in this situation. It's no surprise that Laura is rushed and overwhelmed after firing just two freaking arrows. This scene is cool and all, but there is no way in hell you can fall into a pool of human blood and not come out with some terrible disease. Laura likely has HIV, syphilis, hepatitis, and pink eye. And where did all this blood come from? Do that many people wash up on Yamatai that killing them is enough to create thousands of gallons of blood? If there is this much natural gas leaking into a closed area, like say a cave, everyone inside would have asphyxiated long ago. <laughs> oh, 
Unlikely. No one leaves. That's what I heard in Japanese before the plane crashed. I've watched that scene multiple times and no one says anything in Japanese or any other language for that matter. You're searching for logic and reason where there is none. Brother, you ain't kidding. Matthias walks out of the room saying he's going to do something about the fires, then returns a minute later from the other side of the room, having done nothing to stop the fires and somehow has had time to tie up Dr. Whitman. Go! All of you! Find a chosen one! This one is mine! This guy gives orders to people who aren't even there. Lara just happens to find a working and loaded grenade launcher on the ground. Her ass has been saved so many times by Deus Ex Machina in this game that I'm starting to think Euripides was on the writing team. Come on! Jump! You can do it! Nope. She doesn't stand a chance in hell of making that jump. This isn't the PlayStation 1 Laura Croft who could backflip 10 feet. Slow motion helicopter escape sequence cliche. Oh, now your leg is hurting Roth. Lara is injured bad enough from the helicopter crash and needs CPR, but it's perfectly fine once she starts breathing again. I'm no doctor, but I'm pretty sure when you take a hit so hard that you stop breathing, you are going to need some serious recovery time. Roth takes a hatchet to the back after running out of ammo when he could have just dodged to the side. Guess someone had to fill the heroic male quota for this game. Wait, so you had another gun? Why did you wait until you took a fatal injury to use it? Are you okay, Lara? Is she okay? Because it's all about Lara, isn't it? Roth is obviously dead. No need to ask if he's okay. And no need to be a bitch about it, Reyes. No one leaves the storms. They're linked to the power of the Sun Queen. If Lara didn't talk to herself so much, the audience would have no idea what was going on. Let's talk about these storms that are supposed to crash everything that comes near the island. If that's the case, then how do you explain all the infrastructure the Japanese and German soldiers built? They put up a radio tower, a submarine base, even a freaking freight gondola. You can't build stuff like that with what you find washed up on the beach, so some of their cargo ships had to have made it through. Was Himiko just having a day off when that happened? This entire scene with the suspended boat deserves five more sins just for how improbable it was that Laura survived it. Laura! Alex will be sorry you missed out on this. Yeah, two girls giving each other a friendly hug. That's a fucking party if I ever saw one. At least wait until they take their tops off before you break out the Bacardi. So the tools Reyes needed to fix the boat was a wrench and a flathead screwdriver. I don't want to sound like a male chauvinist here, but I could make do without either of those in the same situation. That's all it gets. I mean, I can understand why you wouldn't feel anything for Alex, but that's a pretty cold thing to do to a guy who is sacrificing his life so you can escape. Why not just tell him he's like a brother to you while you're at it? Really grind it in in his final moments that he was in the deepest reaches of the friend zone and had no chance. Alex waits a whole five seconds after Laura closes the door before blowing up the ship, knowing full well Laura hasn't had time to escape. Probably still feeling a bit put off from that kiss on the cheek. For no reason whatsoever, Laura opens the handle of this katana and finds a plot important note. Would it have been too difficult to have Laura hear something rattle inside at first? Isn't that how this trope is supposed to work? I have failed, my queen. The ritual was corrupted. The priestess knew only death could save her and took her own life. So the girl who was originally going to be Himiko's new body found out and killed herself before Himiko could take it. So why couldn't Himiko just choose someone else? It was even stated earlier that there were other candidates. Why turn yourself into a vengeful corpse that sits on top of a tower for the next thousand years and hopes that one of your ancestors shows up? During the attack, Whitman took Sam and they disappeared! Sam gets kidnapped again, making this her second go around on the kidnapping train and the sixth time overall in this game that a woman is kidnapped by men. Seven if you include the one time Reyes was captured as well. Why doesn't Lara shoot Matthias right now? She has a clear shot and he doesn't know she's there. None of the Oni can see Laura walking across this beam. She's only a few feet above them and there are Oni walking up a staircase that faces in her direction. This big guy kicks open the gate and walks out in this scene and then walks out again in the next. In this shot, these flames cover the entire entrance. In the next, there's a convenient gap for Matthias to drag Sam through. Waste high flames. Nope, couldn't possibly jump over that. I mean, Laura has only ran through two burning buildings already in this game. Arrows again, Laura? Didn't you learn anything from the last time? You have a pistol and an assault rifle. Just saying. Boom, boom! There's the wind! How does an ancient Japanese empress understand English? This guy has no giant club in this scene, but then does in the very next shot. Did Lara somehow forget that Matthias was still there? He was standing just a few feet to the left of where you were aiming. How did he take you by surprise? Matthias fires one bullet, knocking the bow out of Lara's hands, then tackles her like a dumbass rather than empty the clip into her. <sighs> a stick? That's what you use to kill a body-stealing undead witch. Yeah, it worked, but you had two pistols on you. Use the right freaking weapon for once. Single beam of sunlight illuminates the main character's ending cliche.
You're searching for logic and reason where there is none. 